Buying a home right now can be super scary, especially with home prices sitting near all-time highs, housing affordability sitting near all-time lows, mortgage rates bouncing all over the place, and crash porn showing up in your feed daily. But here's what you need to recognize. Crash videos get clicks, and the more clicks someone gets, the more money they make. Therefore, you have a lot of people out there on the internet at the moment promoting this whole idea that the housing market is in some huge bubble and it's about to burst, when in all reality, Home prices are actually sticky to the upside, and that's exactly what we're gonna be diving into in today's video. Now, I'm not here telling you that home prices can't fluctuate, but what I am here telling you is that the likelihood of home prices crashing or coming down in some meaningful way isn't likely to happen anytime soon. And it really comes down to six different factors, which we're gonna dive into right after you hit that thumbs up if you find any value in my videos at all. And if you wanna stay updated on everything mortgage and real estate related, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Now, as you've probably heard me say before, real estate is local. So depending on what's happening in your market with supply and buyer demand may have a bigger impact on what happens in home prices in your market than what's actually happening nationwide. If I'm being honest, you don't really care what's happening in my local market unless you're located in my market. Instead, you probably care more about what's happening with your local market because that is where you're likely buying a home, which is likely to have a bigger impact on your well-being. So when I'm talking about the idea of supply and demand, which is the very first thing I want to talk about in today's video because supply and demand is what drives markets. When you have a undersupply of homes and you have more buyer demand than you have the number of homes available, that is ultimately going to drive home prices up. And that's essentially what we've had over the last four to five years. In fact, we went into the pandemic with a undersupply of homes nationwide, which means we already had more buyer demand than we had the number of homes on the market. And then to add fuel to the fire, you gave people the ability to relocate and work anywhere. In addition to taking interest rates to levels we had never seen before, driving up housing affordability, which created even more buyer demand in the market, essentially driving home prices up. But here's the thing to understand, the lack of supply of available inventory didn't just happen because of the pandemic. This is a problem that's been building since 2010, when home builders put the brakes on building homes. And a large part of that had to do with what happened during the housing market of 2008, where builders essentially had too many available homes on the market, which at that time was an oversupply of homes because there was less buyer demand out there. And a lot of these builders had to take haircuts to get rid of these properties in order to get rid of that inventory. In addition to that, you've had demographic demands, if you will, with the largest pool of home buyers turning prime buying age that we've ever seen before. And guess what? That's not going to stop anytime soon. But one of the bigger issues out there really comes down to zoning in different states. Here in California, it costs nearly $100,000 to break ground on new construction, which makes it very, very expensive for someone to start building homes. On top of that, you have zoning laws and building codes, which at the end of the day, restricts supply and adds to the stickiness of prices. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you're in a market that has an oversupply of homes, if you have more available homes than you do buyer demand out there, then chances are prices will have to come down so that you can ultimately find common ground between sellers and buyers. But for the large part of the United States, with exceptions like Texas and Florida, housing is still undersupplied and you have more buyer demand than you have the number of available homes to meet that buyer demand. Now, the second reason that home prices are sticky is essentially illiquidity when it comes to selling a home. A lot of people compare housing to stocks, but the reality is they're not similar really in any way other than people look at them as an asset. When it comes to selling a stock, you can literally go into your account online, press a button, and get rid of that stock in the matter of minutes. Whereas when it comes to selling a house, not only do you have to get that house ready to put on the market, but it can also be a lengthy process of having to deal with negotiations, legal contracts, as well as transaction costs. When it comes to selling a stock, a lot of stock platforms out there, you can sell a stock for next to nothing. Whereas when it comes to selling a home, you're likely paying a real estate agent somewhere between four to 6% to sell that home when you account for both sides of the commission. Now I do realize there's some commission changes happening out there where the seller may no longer have to pay that buyer's agent commission, but that opens up a whole new can of worms and could ultimately add to drawing out that process even longer if buyers aren't in a position to pay that commission and the seller isn't willing to negotiate. But what I'm really trying to get across here is that home prices are sticky because all of these fees contribute to how a seller looks at their home 
home and why they're not likely to just buy and sell real estate because it's expensive every single time they do it. And that's one of the primary reasons that homeowners are currently staying in their properties for over 11 years now, just because it's getting more and more expensive to not only move, but sell and buy real estate. Now, the third thing I wanna talk about is inflation. Now, you all should be familiar with inflation because it's really one of the main headlines circling the news at the moment and one of the primary reasons that the Fed has hiked interest rates so much in such a short period of time. The Fed has a dual mandate from Congress to not only promote maximum employment, but also price stability. And with that, the Fed has set a goal of 2% inflation on an annual basis. Now, for the better part of 10 years, the Fed couldn't even get inflation to 2%. But ever since the pandemic, with extra spending, supply disruptions, all of these crazy things happening out there in the market, inflation has gone bananas, which I'm sure many of you are aware of when it comes to buying things like groceries or going out and spending money in restaurants. But here's the thing, inflation also puts long-term upward pressure on nominal home prices. In fact, if you took a $300,000 home back in January of 2010, that home today would be worth $427,000. That's a 42% increase just from inflation adjusting alone. So without all of the craziness happening out there in the market, home prices will continue to go up as inflation goes up. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is leverage. And when I'm talking leverage, I'm talking long-term 30-year fixed mortgage rates. And in particular, talking about those that are actually subsidized from the US government. Loans like FHA, VA, where you can essentially put no money down, leverage the government's backing in that transaction, if you will, and buy a house for little to no money down. And all the while you're doing that, you're able to finance that debt on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, which means that mortgage payment isn't going to change for 30 years. And this in turn makes it easier for people to afford homes. And on top of that, you have many homeowners out there at the moment sitting on super low interest rates financed into these long-term fixed rate mortgages, which has essentially locked people into their properties as both home prices and mortgage rates have climbed. So these people can't go out and sell this piece of real estate because if they do, not only would they have to pay more for a home, but they'd also have to pay a higher interest rate, in turn putting a double whammy on their finances. And that's why most people are going to stay put, at least until mortgage rates come back down, making housing a bit more affordable. But one of the key things this has actually done is restricted supply in a market where supply was already an issue. So now you have even less people willing to sell their homes. You have more and more people becoming prime buying age, which is only adding to buyer demand. And this in turn is causing home prices to go up. Now I know a lot of people out there have different beliefs on what's going to cause more supply to come to the market and cause the housing market to crash. We've heard everything from foreclosures to Airbnb bus to the recession causing a huge spike in unemployment. All of these people are gonna to have to sell their homes, all of these different things. And while some of these things may have an impact on supply, the reality is none of them alone are likely going to drive enough supply to the market to change house prices in a meaningful way. Now, I know a lot of people look at me as a real estate agent and someone out here talking about housing, thinking that I only want to see home prices go up because I benefit. And the reality is I would sell a lot more homes homes if home prices were lower. And guess what? The more homes I sell, the more money I make. So I actually make more money with lower home prices than I do with home prices sitting near record highs. And at the same time, we've seen record appreciation in just a short period of time. And I'm a firm believer that at some point, home prices need to move sideways. They need to pull back a little bit in order to continue that upward trajectory. But here's the thing, as I mentioned earlier, it always comes back to supply and demand. And at the moment, there's nothing out there that I see that's gonna cause a big enough increase in supply that's going to drive home prices down. And let's just say for a minute that a recession does come and people do get laid off. And these are people that actually own homes because typically speaking, a lot of the layoffs happen at the lower end of the pay scale and a lot of those people are not homeowners. But let's say you're right and these people are homeowners and they do get laid off. But here's the thing to know, 40% of homeowners at the moment own their properties with no mortgage on them at all. So let's say for a minute, those people get laid off. There's a high likelihood that those people will be able to keep their homes since there's no mortgage on them. They're only gonna have to pay property taxes and insurance, that sort of thing. But on top of that, nearly 60% of homeowners that have a mortgage owe something like 60% loan to value on that property, which basically what I'm getting to here is the large majority of people out there have a huge amount of equity in their property, which means if they were in a distressed situation, they could just put their home on the market for market value. They're not in a position where they have to foreclose on that property. They can actually look at comparable sales and determine what their home is worth and sell it at market value. And the reason I point this out 
is because when you sell a home at market value, that doesn't drive home prices down. What drives home prices down is distressed sales, sellers that need to sell. They don't have equity in their property. They have no alternative but to let that property go. And the reality at the moment is most homeowners aren't even close to that situation. Which brings me into my next point, which housing is a necessity. People need a place to live. Typically, when someone puts their home on the market to sell it, they're also taking one off the market. They're not putting their home on the market and going and deciding to rent. They're not going and becoming homeless in most cases. Most people aren't selling their home and going to live back with their parents. And that's because shelter is a core human necessity. People need a roof over their head. And this is where housing is completely different from a stock. You do not need a stock. It's nice to have a stock. It's nice to have a portfolio of stocks. But the reality is if you had to sell all of your stocks, that in turn isn't likely to make you homeless. And that's because housing is more than a financial asset. And this in and of itself puts a floor on how far demand can actually pull back. And the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to home prices being sticky is the emotional attachment that homeowners have with their properties. Typically when a seller is considering selling their home, or maybe they're not even considering selling their home, but their neighbor puts a home on the market and they go look at their neighbor's home and their neighbor priced their home for say $1.5 million. Well, guess what? That homeowner now thinks their home is worth $1.5 million because homeowners typically think that their home is at least as nice as that property, probably in a better location. And all the upgrades that this seller has done thinks they're way better than that seller's property. So in no way would I let my house go for less money than that house is selling for because my home is way nicer. And the reason I bring this up is because sellers often have a unrealistic expectation of what their home is actually worth and more likely to resist putting their home on the market for less than their neighbor's home sold for regardless of what's actually happening out there. Now you might be watching this going, Jeff, you're absolutely crazy. If somebody has to sell a home, they're going to sell it. Well, I do understand that, but understand, I've sat down at a lot of dining room tables to negotiate prices of properties, and what I can say is sellers are attached to the price of their home. They're watching it closely when in all reality, they shouldn't be focusing on their home as an asset, but most people do. And that's exactly why sellers aren't willing to let their homes go for less than they actually think they're worth, which at the end of the day adds to the stickiness of home prices. But here's the thing, buying a home shouldn't be about anything that we actually talked about today, crazy enough. You shouldn't be trying to pick the top or the bottom in the market. You should rather be focused on whether it's the right time in your life whether you have enough money in the bank to support yourself if you did lose your job, whether or not you're comfortable with the monthly payment. Now, I realize you might not like the monthly payment right now because prices are high, interest rates are high, but here's the thing, you need to be comfortable with it. You need to go into it with the idea that, hey, mortgage rates might not come down as soon as I thought, but you're okay making that payment until they actually do come down. Don't buy a home with the intent of being able to refinance in six months and get rid of the PMI because you think the home is going to appreciate or that you believe interest rates are going to come down substantially and then you're going to be able to afford it so you're doing it now, but rather buy because it's the right time in your life. You can afford the payment and more importantly, you have a long-term time horizon. 